Some interesting development for the Devourer Beyond the Stars, Tyranids seem to be getting some powerful new synapse rules to better propel their swarms and critters into battle. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel, where today brings us an interesting preview of Tyranid rules with these new synaptic link abilities that look like they could be a solid buff to the faction in-game. In the video we'll talk about the release of said rules, talk about how it appears that this synaptic link will work, then go through the two examples of abilities that Games Workshop have shown us. So these ones are going to be released in Warzone Octarius, Book 1 The Rising Tide, the continuation of their little campaign supplement things, and we kind of knew that there were at least some Tyranid rules coming in this, as of course it has a great big Tyranid on the cover. Apparently this is just one among many things Tyranid that we'll see in the book, so presumably there's other stuff yet to come, maybe armies of renown, codex supplements, or crusade rules. The rules themselves are sort of slightly surprising in my opinion, as it does basically look like you're getting an extra Tyranid mechanic thrown in here, and it really doesn't look like it's limited to any specific army of renown, or any specific hive fleet that we know of yet. Just from first glance, this does appear to be the equivalent of other armies paid for in points cost upgrade, such as the Orc Custom Jobs, the Thousand Sons Legion Command, the Space Marines Master of the Chapter, and similar things like that. Small upgrades that you can throw on your Tyranid Synapse units to give them one extra ability that they can use in-game. I do find it quite surprising that they're including it in this book. So far, everything else has seemed really quite supplemental in nature. I suppose you wouldn't necessarily have to use these, but they do look almost kind of auto-include good to me, and I'm sure will be quite a big boost to the Tyranid army. However, if we are seeing this sort of mechanic added in in this supplement book, it really might not bode so well for a new Tyranid Codex anytime soon, as I feel if that was just around the corner, say it was that Xenos one that is due in December, then it would seem strange to put these upgrades in here. I would have expected more things like Armies of Renown or Codex supplements, in a similar vein to what we saw for Death Guard, Admech or Drakari. Not really the best if this is coming instead of a new Tyranid Codex, but still the rules themselves do seem quite fun, so let's take a look. So the rule is called Synaptic Link, and it works through the Tyranid Synapse Network, and although we haven't had the rule spelled out in detail to us, it does appear that each Tyranid Synapse creature can be upgraded with a few points to have a Link ability, and if you do that, then they get to nominate one other Tyranid unit for a buff. I'm going to guess that this is going to be in your command phase. You choose an eligible unit within range, and that unit gets augmented in some way for the rest of the turn. Each Synapse creature does have their own version, so for example, as you will see in a second, the Broodlord one makes a unit more stealthy, and the Neurothrope can project an aura of terror through one of their units, and it's going to be interesting to see what all the others get. If every single Synapse unit does get this, there's going to be quite a lot of options on offer for units like Warriors, the Tyranid Prime, or the Trigon Prime. Hopefully could it add a few new dimensions to make some of the lesser used units a bit more appealing. The way that the buff is applied is also relatively free and interesting as well, and kind of fits well with the Tyranid fluff in my opinion, maybe giving you a slight incentive to having the Snaps network work together. It seems that not only can you apply this buffing ability to any unit within 12 inch range of you, but also if you happen to be within 12 inch range of another Snaps creature, then you can kind of transmit it through them, as you can see by the diagram, supposedly this Broodlord could still buff the Gene Stealers, even though they're not within 12 inch range of him, but they are within 12 inch range of a Hive Tyrant that's joined on on the network. I guess theoretically you could chain out a whole bunch of synapse creatures and have a broodlord on one side of the battlefield broadcast his buff all the way over to the other side, relayed on by each creature with a synapse. As we don't have the full rules yet, we don't know whether these buffs can apply to literally any Tyranid unit that's within range, or whether there might be a few unit restrictions as to what can get ordered to do what. They did call out that the unit themselves will be able to take advantage of their own buff at least, so there's at least a fair chance that it could be entirely de-restricted with anything able to apply the buff to anything else. Just to show us how these work, Games Workshop have given us a couple of examples as well, one for the Broodlord and one for the Neurothrope. They both cost 15 points upgrades over the base model, and they both do seem at least relatively usable to me, that the Broodlord's one is far better than the Neurothrope's one. The Broodlord's ability just makes one unit incredibly more durable, giving them really quite a solid set of buffs in both light and heavy cover innately. And then provided the unit isn't a monster unit, they also get dense cover as well when they're shot from greater than 12 inches away. That means that say if you applied it to a unit of Tyranid Warriors, presuming of course that you can do so, those guys will be at a 3 plus save both at range and at combat unless your opponent ignores cover, and they'll also be minus 1 to hit as well. 
That's just going to make them decently more resistant to virtually any incoming attacks. And for just 15 points to broadcast that ability onto the unit that's going to see the most firepower taken next turn, it's really quite nice. Broodlords are already a relatively common pick in competitive Tyranid lists, and I think with the extra ability of this, in addition to what they have already, I think they're going to become even more common, if anything. If you are taking a Broodlord, then for 15 points I'd say that this is very near an auto-include. The next one for the Neurothrope I think isn't quite as good, and is a lot more of a take or leave. Again it costs 15 points, and sadly it is a leadership debuff ability. You get minus 1 leadership and minus 1 combat attrition in a 6 inch aura around the buffed unit. If it was only an ability that just applied to the Neurothrope itself, I'd say it would be flat out bad. You don't really want your Neurothrope on the front lines next to dangerous enemy models. But seeing as you could potentially broadcast it over half the battlefield if you do have a bunch of Synapse creatures, just being able to pop a fairly decent leadership debuff on one unit of your choice each turn could actually mean that a few more models get to flee. Obviously it would kind of depend on what army you're fighting, if you're playing an army that's basically got a whole load of fearless mechanics in it, or is almost entirely single model very big vehicles, then it's not going to be much good at all. But if you are playing some more leadership susceptible foes, I think it's quite easy that you could make back 15 points with one failed morale test if you're lucky. Still though, nowhere near as good value as the Broodlords in my opinion. Still though, I do think that these abilities could add another interesting dimension to the Tyranids Codex. I do quite like the idea that it encourages you to chain out your Synapse creatures and to make the swarm function as one continuous blob with the big nodes in the centre and then the outlying beasties moving out to destroy the enemy. Could actually add some interesting counterplay to opponents as well as they try and take out links on the chain to give you a bit less choice as to where you put your many buffs. It'll be interesting to see if that sort of playstyle does work out or whether it might just be individual units being accompanied by one character and just going off and doing their own thing. In any case, let me know what you think of the rules and I'm sure that Games Workshop will give us a fair few more previews of the Octarius book as we get it and I'll certainly cover them when they're out. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I certainly try and keep up with Warhammer 40k rules developments, and I usually have new videos coming out each day. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel quite a lot, I'd just like to mention one way in which you can help support if you'd like to, which is my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. Element Games is a UK-based discount retailer, they sell Games Workshop's products and plenty of other hobby supplies, and I thoroughly recommend them if you were thinking about picking something up. If you click the link down in the video description, a small amount of money goes to help support Allspets Tactics when you order, and it doesn't cost you any more whatsoever when you buy something. Could just be a way to help out if you were thinking about picking something up anyway. For people in the USA and Canada, I do also have an Amazon link down there as well. That works in much the same way. Again, if you're buying something anyway, click the link first, and a small amount of money goes to help support the channel without costing you any more. A massive thank you to all of you who have been using those, it really does make a difference. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.